All right, so far we have learned two important techniques. First, how to calculate the indirect deflection in a beam. And second, how to deal with the effect of internal moment or the hidden moment on the beam's deflection. And now we are ready to generalize this concept and deal with any kind of problems in which we need to split the structure into a simply supported beam and a cantilever beam. But before presenting you with the algorithm for solving these kind of problems, let me solve another case which is shown in this video and I would like to solve that numerically then I will present you with the general algorithm for solving these kind of problems. In this problem we have the load P acting on two points at point B which is on the simply supported part and at point D which is the cantilever part of this structure. To answer this problem we actually need to superpose the effect of previous two problems but let me start solving this problem from the beginning. The first step is splitting the structure into simpler parts. We first consider the cantilever beam and a simply supported beam. The simply supported beam or beam number 2 is subjected to external load P but we should note that there is a hidden moment. That hidden moment actually is subjected to internal moment that is caused by the force acting on the right part of that structure, on the cantilever beam. Remember not to forget this internal moment in your calculation. So in this case we have three beams. Beam number one is the cantilever beam. Beam number two is the simply supported beam subjected to external load. And beam number three is the simply supported beam subjected to the hidden moment, to the internal moment. Let's calculate how much is the deflection of beam number 1 at point D. Beam number 1 under load P deflects like this. The value of deflection is called delta 1. And we can go to the table, pick up the value to calculate the deflection. We have done that before. Delta 1 is PL cubed over 3EI. Length is the length of that cantilever beam, which is 2 feet. P is the external force acting on that point, which is 12 kips. And if I plug the values, we get 0 0.0145 feet going downward. Beam number 2 is the, is the beam which is subjected to external load acting at B. And that deforms as shown in this figure. We have learned that slope of beam at point C causes indirect deflection at point D on the cantilever part of that structure. So we need to determine slope then determine the indirect deflection caused by that slope which is called delta prime 2. So first let us determine how much is the slope of that beam at that point. Theta 2 is equal to PA times L squared minus A squared divided by 6 LEI and that gives us 0 0.0097 radian as the slope of the second beam at point C. Now let's consider how much is the slope of the third beam at that point at point C. We know that that beam deflects as shown in this figure. Again, here we see indirect deflection caused by rotation of that beam at point C. So we need to determine how much is the slope of that beam at that point, which is called theta 3 in this case. And theta 3, as we discussed before, is ml over 3 ei. m is 24 kips feet, l is 6 feet. And if I plug the values into that equation, slope of beam number 3 at C would be equal to 0 0.0218 radian. Now we can determine how much is the total indirect deflection at the right part. Delta prime 2 is theta 2 times L sub CD that would be equal to 0 0.0097 times 2 feet which is 0 0.0194 feet. Look at the deflection, look at the direction of the force. Delta prime 2 goes upward because force at P bends the beam downward. When we calculate delta prime 3, which is theta 3 times LCD, the value of that is 0 0.0436. This one goes downward because following the direction of that moment, it causes the simply supported beam to bend upward and the cantilever beam on the right side to bend downward. So we need to take care of the direction of the uh, deflections. 
And the last step is adding the deformations together. So delta D, the overall deflection of beam at point D is equal to delta 1 plus delta prime 2 plus delta prime 3. Here I used prime for delta 2 and delta 3 to mention that these two are indirect deflection and delta 1 is the direct deflection of point D at that point. Here I assume that downward is positive, so delta 1 is positive 0 0.0145. Delta prime 2 goes upward, so that would be negative 0 0.0194. And delta prime 3 goes downward again, so that would be positive, and that would be 0 0.0436. And the overall deflection of the beam at that point, at point D, is 0 0.0387 feet. All right, now let's talk about how we can solve these kind of problems in general. Um, in general, we have two situations. Again, this algorithm can be used for determining deflections in beams that require splitting the structure into a cantilever beam and a simply supported beam. In these kind of problems, we usually deal with two situations. The first situation is determining deflection in the cantilever part. The second situation is determining the deflection in the simply supported part. Let me first talk about the algorithm for case number one, determining deflection in the cantilever part, similar to the problems that we talked about so far. The first step is splitting the structure into simpler parts. We need to split the structure into a cantilever beam, as shown in this figure, and the simply supported beam. In the simply supported beam, apply all external forces acting on that beam one by one, and don't forget the, in the effect of the internal moment. This is a very common mistake. Do not consider only the external forces, but also consider the effect of internal force that passes from the cantilever beam to the simply supported beam. In the second step, determine the direct deflection in the cantilever part. We need to go and find appropriate value from the table. In the third step, determine slope of simply supported beam where the beam connects to the cantilever part. In this figure, the cantilever part and the simply supported beam are connected at point C. So I need to determine the slope of this beam at point C. And we need to determine that for every uh, substructures that we have. Here we have beam number 2 and beam number 3. So we need to determine the slope of the beam at these two points. Let's call them theta 2 and theta 3. Consider the effect of all external loads separately. Also, do not forget the effect of the internal moment that comes from the cantilever beam. And in step number four, determine the indirect deflection in the cantilever part. To determine that, we use trigonometric equation. We look at the triangles as shown in this figure. And we say delta prime 2 is slope, or theta, times the length of the cantilever beam, or in this case, is L sub CD. The same is true for beam number 3. In that case, delta prime 3 is theta 3 times L sub CD. And once we determine all deflections at the point of interest, we can add them together to determine how much is the total deflection in that beam. Now let's consider the second situation in which we want to determine deflection in the, the simply supported part of that structure, as shown in this figure. As what we did before, we need to split the structure into simpler parts. Again, we consider one cantilever part and one simply supported part. In the simply supported part, we need to put all external forces acting on that part. Also, we need to take care of the internal moment. In this figure, there is one force acting on the simply supported part, and there is one internal moment. So we have two beams in the simply supported parts beam number 2 and beam number 3. In each of these two beams, we need to determine the direct deflection caused by the external loading. Remember, to calculate the deformations, we need to consider the effect of all external forces, and we need to do that individually. 
For this case, consider beam number two. Beam number two deflects like this, and we can determine how much is the value of deflection at the point of interest. Similar to that, we can determine deflection of the internal moment that comes from the cantilever beam at the point of interest. Once we determine the direct deflection in these two beams, we can add them together to determine the overall deflection in, at that point. One important note here is that deflection of the cantilever part does not affect the deflection of the point inside the simply supported part. The effect of cantilever beam is actually considered by the effect of that internal moment. So the moment, the internal moment that comes from the cantilever beam actually affects the deflection inside the simply supported beam. But we do not directly add the deflection in the cantilever beam to the deflection in the simply supported part.